Assalamu alaikum. Uh, a march. Y'all know that gold is a commemoration for how many years? 
50 years. We have some legacy marchers that are marching with us today that marched 50 years ago. Make some noise for the legacy marchers. Tony also in the distance, if we can get Father Tony to the microphone as well. Father Tony and the, uh, the congregation of St. Rita is here with us. 50 years ago they marched with us, 50 years ago they dodged rocks, they dodged bullets, they dodged epithets. I talked to some folks back in the day, they even dodged bags of plastic bags of feces and things that were thrown at them. That was the utter contempt and hostility and hatred they confronted. But the marchers, as Reverend Jesse Jackson reminded us yesterday, did never bow to hate. They always fought in the spirit of love, mercy, and compassion, knowing that justice is a tough road, but a road that we will take together. So we're going to open up as we bring uh, Father Tony uh, to the stage. He'll close us out. But Father Mike, if I can still ask you to open up briefly with us. Father Michael Flager, my friend. Put your hands together for Robbie. Put your hands together for Robbie. Woo! Let me just say this quickly. 50 years ago, the place where we're going changed my life. I had just come out of junior year of high school. Myself and two of my friends rode our bikes over here to see what was going on with this Dr. Martin Luther King. Two things I'll never forget from that day. The first was when we rode our bikes into the park, we passed on 71st Street, the Nazi headquarters at 71st and Rockwell that I had never seen before. Then we got into the park and saw hate and violence and people throwing rocks and people throwing stones and yelling all sort of racial slurs. And I saw people there that lived in my neighborhood. A father of one of my friends, people that went to my church and saw all this violence and hate. But then I saw Dr. Martin Luther King, and I saw him walking and not responding to any of the hate and any of the violence. And I realized then, in all my life since, that we never have to submit and surrender to violence. We can always stand up in love. Love is stronger than hate, hate is stronger than violence, and justice will always win over injustice. And that's why we're here today. Because guess what? As a stone hit Dr. King in the head then, stones are still being thrown. Stones of division and hate and violence and separation from one another. But guess what? Look at this crowd. The stones can't stop this. The hate can't stop this. The injustice can't stop this. We're here to continue the march today. We have in our city today segregation and violence and brothers being shot down on the street, but we can stop it. Today we gotta join the march again and say Dr. King will pick up where you left off. Thank you. Brand basket. She is not here today, but I know she is shining down on me and our spirit and seeing the unity of our community here. We've always wanted to change the negative things that they say about Inglewood, the South Side, about Chicago. And this is a reflection of that. This is a reflection. And so our journey to justice will continue. We will continue our work in Inglewood. We will continue our partnerships in Iman. And I hope everyone is just fired up to really walk our streets and take back our streets here in our communities. I'm going to ask that some of our diverse clergy 
Reverend Alice Hunt from the Chicago Theological Seminary. Please give it up. Father Tony Fahdizo from Father Sheikh Mohammed Imam. Some of our clergy that are here with us. And I'm going to ask that Father Tony Pizzo, a great leader in this community with San Rita Church, say something with us on behalf of the clergy that are gathered here today as we open and reflect in prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God gave us an incredible day. This is unbelievable. We have the sunshine. We have the diversity. We've got the energy and the enthusiasm. And you know what? I love that word enthusiasm. You know what that word means? It means to be filled with God. To be enthused means to be filled with God. And here we are, right? We're filled with all kinds of enthusiasm. I'm here with my colleagues, my brothers and sisters, clergy, clergymen, and women, and women. As you can see, as you can see, faith traditions, no matter where we come from, no matter where we are right now, it's all about equality. It's about, all about recognizing that each and every one of us have got gifts and talents to share. For us to be able to somehow, some way, bring all kinds of people together as we have today with this purpose of recognizing the face of God in one another. Let's see the face of God in one another. Look around you right now, just for a moment. Just look around, look around. You can see the face of God. And so we thank God for this. And so we pray that the Lord give us grateful hearts and generous hands as we continue to continue this journey of justice together. God bless all of us. Que Dios nos bendiga todos los ojos, porque aquí estamos unidos en el nombre de Dios, en el nombre de nuestras tradiciones de fe. Gracias a Dios por todo. Let's go. 
Good morning. Good morning. Today's Southwest side is here and look at it. The journey for justice continues. Whether it's immigration, the fight for access to full participation in citizenship, whether it's an end to deportation for our Latino brothers and sisters, for our Palestinians, whether it's the opportunity to live well in your neighborhood, it's a it's a day for us to go around and connect with each other. Last night I had story after story about the relationships we all built through these yeah, life I think that come. Let's make that happen. All right, look, let me just open up by saying this here. My wife is going ancestry. Tom Kippo is here. So she asked me to do my DNA and send my DNA in by ancestry. When my DNA came back, I was shocked to find out that I was 60% Irish. I said, what are you saying? I said, as black as I am, I'm Irish. What the heck is that? Then I found out that I was part of uh, uh, other communities. And I found out that I was only 20% black. <laughs> Wait a second, what's up with that? What is that telling us? Dear people, that we are one people. We are one community. If you close your eyes and you look at each other, you'll see, you won't see black, you won't see white, you won't see anything, you'll see humanity. So we have to see one humanity and where we have came from, from that travel from those dark times in America to where we are right now. Now our children can go to our, uh, MIT, now they can go to different colleges and universities. The forces that we are fighting right now is immorality. Those are the forces we're fighting now. So fight for your family, fight for your children, fight for your, for, for your community. And let's continue to work for one humanity. Nowhere now in this world can anybody hide and do it wrong to anybody. Thank you very much. Peace. All right, well, let's give it up for all our brothers and sisters once again. Trinity United Church of Christ in the house, make some noise. Okay. Westside of Chicago in the house, make some noise. Now I want to hear a thunderous applause from the south side, make some noise. Now come on. All right, say the journey to justice continues. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here 50 years after the spot. Just around the corner was a place called Havelston Realtors. It was, a, it was a target for the marchers 50 years ago because they were part of the system that, that locked black families out of neighborhoods, that perpetuated residential segregation, redlining. Today, our targets are not just one storefront realtor. Our targets are those policies and systems and structures that continue to keep our communities down. But we are here to say the journey to justice continues. We will honor those sacrifices and we will honor those struggles. We got a sister, Alicia Blue Eyes. Is she in the house? Is the sister Alicia Blue Eyes? She's gonna join up. Give it up for our sister. Before we get ready here on the march, we're gonna hear someone who helps to soothe our souls. Give it up, make some noise for Alicia Blue Eyes. Peace and love, everyone. I come from Flint, Michigan. Don't worry, I'm Leah Three. I've been in Switzerland for a while, since 2003. But I 
am proud to be here. I'm very humbled and honored by the people that I'm right behind me, right with me, right beside me. So they asked me just to do a little, little something. Yeah, just take some of us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll get the. Won't you help me sing this song of freedom? It's all I ever had. Redemption song. Say, won't you help me sing the song of freedom? It's all I ever had. Redemption song. Say, freedom, freedom, I can't breathe. Freedom, come ease me. Freedom, freedom, where are you? Cause I need freedom too. I got trained by myself. Cause I won't let my freedom run in hell. Hey, I'ma keep winning cause I'm winning, never quit on themselves. No! Thank you. Oh, you sure? Hang on. Hang on. Grab it, Paul. Selma, Alabama. Today is the anniversary, August 6th, of Lyndon Johnson signing the Voting Rights Act of 1965, this day. On this day, for 85 years, we've been denied the right to vote in the South. We all came up together. Blacks marched, but not blacks alone. Before the and Cheney were killed in that march, the Jews were black. Well, Louisa was killed in the Italian mother in that march. Jimmy Lee Jackson was killed in that march. We marched together. Blacks could not vote in the South. White women could not serve on juries. 18 year olds who served in Vietnam could not vote. Couldn't vote on campuses. Couldn't vote bilingually. 
We couldn't vote proportionally. But we never stopped marching. We folks with the woman's car and cried that Brother Paul was dead to the young man shot in the back of the door. It was unnecessary. It was excessive. And those who kill people must pay the price. And whoever kills people, whoever kills people must pay the price of killing people. The badge, protect and serve, not cover up and lie. Protect and serve, not cover up and lie. The killing took place in South Carolina. The mayor and the governor stepped up fast. We are in the state of Illinois, Mr. Governor. We've not yet had a charge. Everybody, everybody knows the man got killed, so they shot in the back. So we want the state's attorney in the last days to do the state's attorney in your last days in the right way. Governor, let's hear from you. But since we can't trust you, we need federal intervention now. 25 from the shot, 25 from the shot, 400 killed this year. We need federal intervention. Now, the last point is on this issue that when whites kill blacks, it's riot time. Blacks kill whites, it's jail time. Blacks kill jacks, blacks is killer time. Back up, back up. So, so we must say, so whoever kills anybody, it's a hate crime. Nobody has the right to kill anybody. You cannot be a weak link in a, in a chain of sickness. Blacks kill whites, jail time. Whites kill blacks, riot time. Blacks kill blacks, browns kill browns, it's middle time. We cannot accept the idea that no one has the right to kill anybody. I'm just saying closing on this march while we're marching that day. In Chicago, 25% of the people live on 10% of the land. That's where we had those high rises. That was designed to control our growth. We have one black congressman, and no one knows how we have three blacks and one of the Because we were locked in. And we were in the Marquette Park, but not the biggest one across the country. This is the state. This is the state.